last one. We really have the last one this session, though. <laughs> <laughs> Life is a cha cha. I keep doing the fun stuff. Alrighty. We're parking. We're doing this light. Alright. We're not getting the. Get fire. <coughs> presentation on we'd like to sing the world to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony I have my diet coke because I couldn't have coke um, the way this presentation is going to work is going to be a little bit different than they've been in the past uh, I'd like to basically spend about 20 or 25 minutes with us blasting with a little bit of information and then from that 25 minute point on it's going to be audience participation the whole rest of the way Okay, so we need you to really get involved, get to participate, but we're going to keep our stuff short and sweet because we want this all to be about us working together. Okay, uh, here we are. We are at the uh, Call Lab session 2018 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. <coughs> short and sweet, I said. Uh, your presentation is by myself, Paul Cody, <coughs> by Wade Driver, and by Ted Lazar. Yeah. Uh, we're not supposed to advertise, and I'm really not advertising with this, I just want to show you where we're coming from. Uh, I'm, I'm Paul Cody, I've done uh, ego recordings, uh, and uh, I've been calling about 30 years, and I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, Wade Driver has been doing 61 years of calling, he's been uh, the one responsible for rhythm recordings for ever, and so you've got all of his music, I'm sure, and the newest label out there. Uh, or one of the very newest is uh, Ted Lazat from Manchester, New Hampshire, another 30 year caller, uh, and he is uh, the owner of Throwback Tunes. So you have three people here who are all people who produce music, and we have a pretty good idea of what's, what sells, or in my case, what doesn't sell, uh, because we know what most of your ranges are and how, and how you work together as callers. Uh, I want to tell you very briefly what this program is and what it's not. It's not going to be a detailed music theory program. We're not there. That's not who we are, okay? It's not going to be a professional voice pro program. You want a professional voice program? Go to Lisa's program tomorrow, okay? She'll teach you the ins and outs. We're just going to kind of play loosely by the rules. And there's no guarantees here either. What we want to do is give you the opportunity to learn how to work with other guys and gals on a regular basis so you can sound together, good together as a team. And I know everybody here in this room is the best caller ever, and you guys are fantastic on your own, but being fantastic on your own and working together is a totally different animal. All right, we are going to introduce you to the very basics of music, we'll introduce you to harmony within chords, and we'll introduce you to blending with others. Typical grand piano, big old piano, 88 keys. It has uh, 88 keys that cover just over seven octaves of music. An octave is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Or it could start with any one of them, but bottom line is it's those seven notes plus that extra one where you start over again. All right? Um, on the, uh, the C major scale is the middle key on your piano there, C4. Okay? And that's repeated seven times in the grand piano plus another third. Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Axl Rose, they're all reported to have a five octave range. We could debate that all day, but we don't have time. All right? But that is one heck of a range to do almost the entire length of the keyboard of a piano. That is huge. We care about one octave. About one octave today. That's it. Not a heck of a lot more. Uh, why? Because, well, that's what most callers sing, is about one octave. Um, we're going to be sharps and flats and things like that. 
We don't care about that. It's not a music theory situation. All we care about is C, D, E, F, uh, G, A, B. That's all we care about. Uh, the average caller has just over a one octave range. <laughs> 10, 12 notes. That's it. All right? I promise you, you might think you have more. <coughs> you probably don't. There are a few people that do, but most of you don't. All right? Just because you can hit a note doesn't mean you can hit a note and sound good. Uh, listen to a few of my recordings, and you, you'll be fine. The, I don't have that big a range either. All right, so we're going to start one octave below middle C. Okay, and this, and this is C3, it's called. It's, 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 it's C3. Uh, it's one octave below middle C. This is where we're going to start our work. Uh, it's also... Where you've heard, you've heard the song, I'm sure, someplace along the way, Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do. Okay? That's where it is. That's that, 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 those eight pieces of music that just repeat themselves over and over again. Those notes repeat themselves. Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do. Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do. Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do. And the inspiration for this program, by the way, is sitting right over there in the corner, Justin Russell. All right? Because now we were in Nashville. What year was Nashville? <laughs> <laughs> we were in Nashville, and we're driving home, and we, we picked up. Justin to ring home, and we had a conversation about this specific topic on the way home from, from Colorado. He said, I learned more 10 minutes in this car than I did, you know, in a couple of sessions in, in Colorado. I said, well, it's, it's there. It's there. It's all for you. It's easy. All right, so, do re mi fa so la ti do. You got hand signals for it, all that other stuff. The easiest way to learn about do re mi fa so la ti do is this. Folks, it's 53 years old now. It's one of the most classic musicals of all time. It's the sound of music. Uh, uh, what the hell's her name? Uh, Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews and all the Von Trapp kids, and they sing Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do. You say so, Young Trapp kids? Yes. You did say Young Trapp kids. Von Trapp kids. Von Trapp kids. All right. So that's about as much as I want to get into as an introduction here. Uh, now. Wade, Ted, and I are each going to take five minutes. I'm going to take six, because for my six minutes, I want to play you one scene from The Sound of Music. All right? And that one scene from The Sound of Music, as far as I'm concerned, is what puts this whole thing all together. Okay? I just have to switch projectors. One second. <coughs> Did you get a run through in this before? No. <laughs> don't worry, you don't need run throughs. We know. <coughs> you said pointed at the back. Yeah, where's the other one? This is the control. Mm -hmm. projector here. I would like Ted to talk about maintaining the melody in a song when it comes to singing harmonies. Somebody's going to do the hard part of keeping that melody direct. So, Ted, go ahead and keep going. This was not in the script. <laughs> do a break routine. Break routine. No, Paul was asking me if there's anything. I, I'm, I'm here for uh, the, I'm, I'm the pretty one. Uh, so, uh, I was. Uh, the the me, son. <laughs> it was. Uh, he, he was asking if I had any anything to, to add to this. Um, I have. Uh, I was a musician long before I became a square dance caller. Um, for about 15 years, um, I played trumpet. Didn't really sing too much. Can I stop now? No. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm, I'm used to being in an organization, if you've ever played in a band or anything else, um, it, blending is almost as important, if not more important, than you know, hitting. you got to hit the right notes, but then, and even if you're all hitting the right notes, if it doesn't blend, then it, it still sounds horrible, because the idea is to have a certain atmosphere going on. And it's not much different when you're singing with somebody else. So, I am not very good with the uh, 
harmonies when I first started, uh, Paul will tell you. Uh, Paul sang all the harmonies around us. Paul and I called together for about 10 years. Um, so Paul sang around me. But what I think is very important and what I, when I try to work with somebody else as I've gotten better over the years is somebody, as in a comedy duo or, some, or when you're dealing with singing, somebody has to be the straight man. Somebody has to toe the line and has to sing it the way everybody knows it's sang. Whether it's the way it's on the record or whatever you agree to, somebody's got to be straight. Because if, if you don't play it the same way, the people that are trying to work around you don't know where you're going. And all you're going to do, if you breathe at the wrong time, when all of a sudden Wade's going to go and hit the big harmonic note somewhere over here and I stop to take a big breath, then all it is is just Wade in falsetto sticking out like a sore thumb because uh, there's nobody to blend with. So it, 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 as, as important it is, is when you get into the harmonics, never leave the fact that if you're working with somebody else, somebody should be singing it straight and probably whoever that person is that's singing it straight should be louder and be the one that is in front of the others musically because that's what everybody is keying on the other stuff is the fluff it's the filler it's the nice things that you hear around it that make it sound even better but you what you don't want to have is three people singing and the guy that's doing the harmonics off the melody line is louder than everybody else that's trying to sing with them the guy so make sure you pick whoever's doing your harmonics or who's doing your melody line it's it's important so keep that in there Anything you want to add to that, since I was free? No, no, no I, 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 I've got my five minutes coming. <laughs> this one, it's starting. Oh. I don't know, are we good? No, I know, see, he's going to break routine again. I got to keep talking? What yeah. else do we talk about? Do a song and dance. I don't no, know. no, in that case, yes. <laughs> uh, what is it? The lead singer has to be a rock, and when it applies to square dance calling, per se, we spend, what, at least 75 to 80% of our time calling right. alone. All right, we're all by ourselves, so we develop a style. And particularly if you're doing certain songs, you might develop a certain style for that song that you like to do. And it might be, Mary had a little lamb, but you might go, Mary had a little lamb. Well, that's all good and well, but the people that are going to try to harmonize you have no clue what you're going to say. So when you get up to do a song with people backing you up or singing with you, sing it straight. Sing it straight. One of the rules we have, particularly as we travel around like last night with, with Tony and Mike at the dance, if, if we did a song that Tony did, like uh, Come Save Away, all right, we're going to do the lyrics, the phrasing, like he did on the record, like he and Jerry Story did on the record. That's what we're going to sing. I don't care what I sing normally, and I don't care what Tony sings when he's by himself, but when he's on that record, this is the way he sang it. This is the way the lead singer, you're going to sing with him. If he changes, I'm going to kick him in the knee. Right? As simple as that, because this you lose your hung out to dry, like Ted said, all right? So when you I don't care how good you are, whatever you are by yourself, you sacrifice that for the product. The product is all that counts. The product that the dancers here. Are we good now, sir? Yes, sir. Good. All right. All right. We'll come back and touch back with them in just a minute. <coughs> all right, we'll, we'll touch back with them in just a minute, but I don't want to get this scene playing, hopefully. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, it's been out there 53 years, folks. If you haven't had the chance to sit back and watch this movie, spend a three-hour evening with your with your loved ones and watch it. It's a fantastic movie, and it's everything that we do. Those eight, those seven notes, or those eight notes, are the basis of everything we do. And when we sing, okay? It can be expanded upon a hundred times, but the basics are do re mi pa la ti do. And they even illustrated, they even illustrated in that picture the, the steps. You notice how I showed you that little graphic with the people on the steps? But as they were singing, they were actually going up and down those steps to the do re mi fa so la ti do at the same time. And at the very end there, you heard uh, Julie Andrews jump an octave and another octave. Okay, that girl has some pipes. Yeah. Not anymore. <coughs> she had surgery and they're gone. But okay, so I need to get back to here. 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 Here.
So, uh, let's move right along because uh, we're, we're ahead of schedule here, actually. We're going to get you singing very quickly. And this is a mandatory audience participation thing. Uh, hello. <laughs> again, again, paid professional. <coughs> Don't attempt this at all. I'm sorry, we're not ahead because I haven't talked to you. Okay, so harmonies are created by playing notes that sound good together. Chords, all right? You're going to have chords, and here's the, one of the basic chords. It's a C major chord. You see it fingered that way on a, on, a, on a guitar neck or on a piano. It's here. Those notes sound together good. They sound good when you're singing together. There are other notes that don't sound good together. You're all familiar with the old tune chopsticks, the one, the only song that we know how to play on the piano. Those are these two notes here. It does not sound pleasant to your ear, does it? Okay? Doesn't sound pleasant. They don't go well together. But if you do this, all of a sudden now they do. All right, it's because we've, we've skipped a, a note, and again, way too much theory we don't want to get into. When we do work with other callers on a stage, we're either working with a partner, as we did for a long time along the way, or we do with three or four or more. But if you have three, it's three-part harmony. If you have four, it's four-part harmony. When we're doing it as callers, we're kind of cheating a little bit. Because we as callers, an actual four-part chord for a C is C, E, and G. All right? Then you got to add the B, which is higher than that. All right? But it's not the full octave. We're callers and we're not professional singers, so we're just going to do that high, that high do, that high C. All right? And the reason that I'm saying that is, you know, bang, too advanced. Not this program. That's another program sometime down the line. We're here to keep things simple. Yeah. <laughs> All right? Now, I did put up that graphic for a very specific reason. It looks incredible. This is supposedly the biggest organ in the world. All right? But if you notice on that biggest organ in the world, what you're seeing is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, over and over and over and over and over again. It's the same eight notes being repeated and brought into a whole more, a whole more program. All right, for our four-part harmony today, we're going to add the octave. We're going to do the C, E, G, and then the high C. So our four-part harmony is going to be here. Let me try that again with steady fingers. There's our four-part chord right there. And we're going to play with that. All right, so before we start uh, with the harmonies, we'll have Ted with a lot talk on maintaining the melody. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Wait, did we do your part or we no, we have not. We have not done Wade. So we did this. <coughs> we're gonna get Wade to speak for five minutes on blending together, which is probably the best and most important thing for what we do. I'm gonna step out of his way. Uh, sure. Yes. But uh, something Ted Swap said, well, you know, the leader has got to be firm and that, but if he's the only one you can hear, you don't hear anything. Now we either have normally two of us which is the most time we read. If we have more than one, it's only two. And that's not bad, because you can just go right there. All right, I understand when you say somebody sing the third, that's do re mi, mi's the third. It's one, two, three, not rocket science. Stir it up, do re mi, and the fifth, do re mi fa so. So you got one, where am I, there, C, C, one, two, three. I got terrible fingers today. One, that's three part home. Now, if I do that, which knows the loudest? None of them. They're the same. That's a blend. If this one is all you can hear, and the other guys are way back behind, tell me to go to the bathroom, man, I do any good anyway. All right? It, theoretically, a chord, you should hear one note. One note. If I can play it, that one. So you think, I can't tell which of those guys is which. That's a perfect chord. Now, well, we have another kind. That, that is if you're doing three-part harmony as a lead vocal. All right? In other words, all of you are singing at the same time, same level of intensity and same level of decibels. But what if we have a thing called background vocals? You have the leader here. The other two are doing this, but they're lighter. They're behind you. 
They're like another musical instrument. You have to decide which one you want. If you've got three people that all sing well, last night was just a pleasure for me because it was with Tony and Mike, I can't lose. You know? I'm stupid, I sing the lead. That's what I do, that's what I am. It's like a rock, I ain't gonna get off that thing, right? And these guys, they make me sound really, really good. It's like, hey, I think it don't have to look good. <laughs> so, but let's say that's not really the situation sometimes. Or you just prefer to be the leader. Then let the two background vocals do just that. Lay back like an instrument, all right? So the blend has to be those two. That has to be like one note. choice but whatever it is if you're singing harmony and there's another harmony singer be exactly the same level of decibels coming out of that speaker or whether it's acapella or whatever that's the key if it's not blended it sounds like a cat fight all right it's, it's just really it's just it's bad blending is worse than no harmony it really bad blending just really sounds awful because you got screeching going on and, that, and that's not good so uh if you're going to do a, a thing with guys, I mean, last time was Peace Cake. We did not practice. No, those two guys, I don't need to practice. I see you make a noise and they'll make it sound good, all right? But if you've not worked before together with someone, take the time to practice because good harmony really sounds nice and it makes things really fly. And today at our meeting on, on record they said, why do we get some records with harmony background vocals, some without background vocals? And then they say, you got an X and you got an X1. What's that? When I mix down, I do the background vocals. X1, they're loud. So when you do the music, you've got a three-part harmony. I do an X2 where the background vocals are down softer. So you're the lead and they're singing as an instrument behind you. You make the choice, All right, which sounds best. But blending, always blend, same level. When you go this to the, the, the speaker, you should not pick out one singer or the other. Unless one of them is a female and the other is male, you're going to hear the tone, but it's still going to be like a violin and a cello. Right? That's the only difference you hear. Does that make sense? I'm done. Did I use my time up? Perfect. Perfect. All right. Perfect. <laughs> so here's the thing. A lot of the other sessions you're going to, you're looking on how to, hey, listen, I'm a showmanship. I'm going to put on my show. Here's my thing. And you've got to be your, your unique individual self to sell you a program. But that's not what this is about. This is taking your personal self, putting it aside, and working with these other guys who are fantastic professionals that I am thrilled to have the chance to work with. Guys, can you get up for me, please, and uh, stand here? Oh, okay. Okay. thank you. This is the exact to do this. <laughs> I'm going low. You going there? <laughs> right now, let's harmonize. All right, so. Uh, I'm going to just do a couple here with Ted, with Ted and Wade, and then I'm going to get us into groups and uh, and uh, see what we can do from there. So Ted, if we're going to start you off here on, on C3. All right, now give me Do Mi So, all right? about as much as we have. <laughs> 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 Peter. <laughs> 
somebody else is singing a different note That's in your ear. That, <laughs> that exactly was the point that Ted was making with his presentation earlier. His part of the presentation is holding that 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 main melody line is, is tough. It is not easy to do. All right, so here's what I'd like to do. There's our four-part chord, all right? I'm going to ask you all to stand up now. All right, I'm going to have to make adjustments as we go. But what I need is if this is your note that you feel most comfortable with if this is your note okay that you feel most comfortable with i want you to come up here in this front left corner come on up there right now make, make a pile make a pile come on Superstar callers, you are the festival doers of the whole square dancing world. I get it, okay? But it's not about that right now. It's about sounding good with the person you're standing next to. All right, guys, where'd you go? Uh, you, you want to uh, give me a note when I when I go with these people? Okay, so I'm going to start over here with Doe, with this group, and Ted.
together now. We want to do this one chord, all those. As a matter of fact, let's switch it from do mi so do to a, a single con, the single sound. Of, let's do it. Uh, let's just start with ah. Okay. Ah. Wow. wow. You guys can sing. Let's try it again. One more time. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. 
Oh, we're very good. Pretty nice. nice. All right, I want to try one more, and then we're going to play with just working with different options with these chords here. Let me try one other thing. Uh, okay, let me get four more volunteers here. Let's see. Hmm, just a second. Lisa. Lisa. Just a second. I'm going to take this gentleman right here. Don, come on, get up here for me. Um, you can do it. I have confidence. Jim. Go ahead, right up there, right up there. Uh, how about you? Yeah, come on. And, uh, I see you, I see you hiding, Mag, there, come on, come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, come on. All right, so, all right, again, just to need four notes from me, okay? I'm going to start you right here. Okay. Who's going to do the bass part here? All right, you hear the bass part. All right, so let's try and get you on the microphone as best we can. Here, why don't you guys hold Yeah, they go. No, do two. There you go. Two for you. You got that next All right, let's try this. Jim Law right here. We have Cy Schuster. We have uh, which one is Charlie Jackson and Oswell under over here. These gentlemen are. I have a, uh, a a handout that I obviously didn't go give out in advance for this particular reason, uh, but it has a nice little bio uh, that Jim wrote about the group. And Char uh, Charlie wrote. 
Charlie Brothers, all right. So, uh, He's would, the oldest. <laughs> okay, I would like all to, the rest of them are illiterate. I would like to have them uh, just take a moment here and, uh, and, and, and share a, a thing or two about themselves and maybe perhaps their ages if they'd like. Well, we, um, we're, if you can't tell by looking, we're what's known as the seniors. Quartet, okay? And uh, we've been together for about 20 years. We won the seniors uh, Rocky Mountain District Championship 20 years ago. And then we haven't had anything to do since then. Until one day, um, Paul called and said, hey, I need a quartet. Do you guys know where one is? Said, yeah, you got us. So anyway, we, we agreed to come down and do a little singing. But uh, the, the age part of it is what's mo most important to a lot of people. Our average age is 83. Oh, wow. of, uh, of course, Charlie is 110. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, I thank God every day these kids will let me sing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so our average age is 83 and our combined age is uh, 330 or something like that. So anyway, we're happy to be here and uh, thanks for letting us come in and sing for you. <laughs> Okay, so we have a we have a little bit of a plan here that we'd like to take to the next the next step. While we have this fantastic barbershop quartet with us, we're, we're going to bring you back to your groups because I'm going to need you to help with each of your own groups. All right. Uh, they suggest. Well, actually, do you want to do it first, Jim? Do you want to do it first to, by yourselves, and then we'll get everybody all together? Oh, sure. Okay. Charlie. So. Um, we'll come back. Watch. Come back. I'm sorry about that. I just thought you was done. Uh, before <laughs> I cool. before I do this next section. Uh, what I do want to mention to you all is this fantastic quartet has uh, volunteered to uh, sing a few songs for us tonight during social hour. So, um, I, I understand that you're all there to, you know, rub elbows with Melton and Trell and, and, and Marshall Flippo and the other legends, okay? And you're all looking to get your picture with them and your selfie and everything else, but if you guys could help direct some people in the direction of this quartet. Uh, they're just going to be in the lobby with us and they'll sing for 10-15 for minutes and we'd love to have you join in with them as well. But one of the things that uh, we thought would be really nice is to have the quartet sing a song and then get the entire group to sing the song with them. So, uh, what do you want for a note? Uh, uh, be, be flat uh, for... Uh, let me call you sweet Sure. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be flat. <laughs> I don't know where B flat That's is on right. the keyboard. We've got a pitch about that. Find C and go back. Find C and go back and have a flat key. Flat key. Flat key. Flat key. Flat key. That one. <laughs> <laughs> it's cordless, gentlemen. It's cordless. <laughs> Let me call you sweetheart. Yeah. 
All righty. So that's all right. We're going to get uh, Jim to the lead. Come here and take the lead on this. You tell me. Tell me you got the melody. Jim, you got the note. Why is it called the third? 
third because it's one, two, three. Okay? I know what she's asking. Do I sing parallel thirds the whole way? No. Yes, <laughs> until you know what you're doing, you do. Well, no. <laughs> Once you know what you're doing, you do. You have two ways to do it. You can chord it, which huh? means you can chord it, which means you're singing a third over that root chord, whatever that singer's singing. Or if you harmonize, have you ever been hot air ballooning? When you hot air balloon, they put the balloon a certain number of feet above the ground. Then no matter what the topography is, it stays the same number of feet above that particular surface. That's harmonizing. You contour that thing and you say that far above his note. So, if I, so I learned this the hard way because I used to chord and on the song we did, Are You On The Love To It Loving Me Again? I'm in the heart singing, I'm going, Are You On The Road To Loving Me Again? And my engineer says, I thought you were going to harmonize. I said, I thought I was. He says, you're not. Because <laughs> he goes, are you on the road to loving me again? That's the army note. Because so are you on the road to loving me again? Are you on the road to loving me again? You contour. Yes. If you call it parallel. Well, you but you there. stay the same distance from the... Distance. Yes, ma'am. That's what... Uh, instead of chording, if the chord note is da da, are you on the road to loving me again? Are you on the road to loving me again? I'm only doing two notes, the chord, the chord. That's the way you start, but if you, once you get the hang, then you learn to contour, that's the proper way. It only took me 56 years. Okay. <laughs> and, and these gentlemen, you notice as they, were, as they were singing, they started off with a chord, and then as they progressed through their song, they started to go off in their own direction. They are professionals. We're just trying to get you out, there, out of the starting <laughs> yes. gate, okay? Once we get you out of the starting gate, there's so much available to you. And if you like this program, perhaps in a future year we could do a little bit more of a more advanced program for you. But for the very basics of today, the absolute... According. That's it, according to start. Somebody else had a question. Mr. Hogan. It's an comment. Comment, okay. Then. All right, Mike Hogan from Hola, Nebraska. What? Were you going to say how I look? Yes, you look fantastic today. Thank you. Why? So, um, I'll flirt some other time. Uh, I, I, I did a lot of singing in school and such before I started calling, and then I got completely out of singing, and I kind of forgot how to do a lot of the harmony. Uh, then I started doing weekends with other callers, and I had to get back into it and figure it all out. And I do okay, but there's certainly some, some guys that do a lot better finding the harmony notes than I am. But one of the things when I want to work on harmony that helps me a lot is, sorry, I'm a radio guy, right? Here's a radio thing. When I, I'll drive down, down the road and I'll listen to, especially if I listen to a little bit older country music. <clears throat> if you're thinking harmony, listen to that, and instead of listening for the melody and singing along, start listening for the harmony lines. Pretty soon you'll pick up those harmony lines and you'll start being able to sing them. And as you're singing those harmony lines, all of a sudden a new song will come on that you know the song, but you haven't listened to the harmony lines so much, and now you know the key and as soon as you know the key, you know exactly where the harmony notes are, and you're able to do the harmony without actually studying and listening. And it really makes it Absolutely. much easier That's to exactly. figure out where those yes. chord notes you are. You find it after a while, you never sing the melody. You always sing that, that harmony. No, always sing the harmony. <laughs> and, and how do you find that, that third harmony that Mike's talking about? Okay, sing the, the note along with them, okay, and just sing that note, whatever that note bit is, and you go, do, re, mi, and then from there you're singing here instead of here, here instead of here, and there's your harmony, you know, so it's there and available to you. Listen, I had, I, Jim was, he, he's, I, I brought him here to work with you folks, and he took me out to dinner, isn't that a nice deal? Uh, and I know how you eat. Wow. That hurts right in my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim and I were talking, and he was trying to understand a little bit about what it is that we do. And bottom line is, very few of us come into this activity as musicians first, and then become callers, okay? Most of the people that get bitten by the caller bug are bitten because they like the puzzle. Okay? It's the computer techies, it's the, the engineers, it's, it's the, the well, flat out, it's the nerds, okay? We're, we're, I'm one of them, okay? The bottom line is, is that's the people that are attracted into square dance calling, and music comes secondary, okay? When Jim is doing barbershop, he's not doing it because he likes the puzzle. He's doing it because he loves music, and he loves what those chords sound like. You will know when you have finally done it right, 
when you hear in your ear, when you're working with three other guys or three other gals or a combination of the above, and all of a sudden, you just hear as you've got that one chord going there, and you hear this tiny little flutter in your ear. It's a tiny little flutter, and it almost feels like you're losing your balance just a little bit. And I don't know what the name, do you even know what the name of the, that, that thing is? You know what I'm talking about. Okay. It, it, it's, you'll, you'll hear this thing in your ear where it just kind of goes wonky. It's, and when that happens, and it, it's happened to me half a dozen times in my life, okay? It's not something that's going to come easy. But when that happens, you'll say, that's what he was talking about. That was not, not yeah, just this is part of it, but yes, resonance, resonance, resonance. that resonance, yes. Oh. Okay, who else? Questions? Yes, Miss Lisa. I have a question. Please. First barbershop, you are amazing. I just wanted to know, oh, Lisa from Santa Fe, New Mexico. How often do you practice? Once a week. For how long? A couple of hours. Wow. Repeat that on the microphone. They practice once a week for a couple hours. And I wanted to make a comment, and I will give you guys a warm-up if you come to the voice session tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> that will help you to find harmonies. But also, if these guys didn't talk about vowels, they need to match their vowel when they hold a note, because sometimes you'll find harmonics, but there's one singing E and one singing E, and you'll go, oh, they're off pitch, but they're actually on, and it's because their vowels aren't matching. We call that a vowel movement. <laughs> I, like, I like this guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's microphone world. That's microphone world. Yeah, what was that? Did you call that sound? In the barbershop community, we call that a vowel movement. <laughs> I call it running out of air. Now, for those of you who are interested, again, Lisa's doing a program tomorrow on voice. Uh, Lisa's going to listen. You know, you're going there to Lisa's program to learn a little bit about yourself, not to teach her, not for you to tell her tell her about you, she's going to tell you about you, all right? And that's a good thing because we all need that, all right? Anybody else? Questions, comments, thoughts? Any? Yes, sir. Where are you? I'm sorry, I'll turn around. Scott Bennett from Oklahoma. Hey, my question is, if I'm singing the lead and you're singing your third, uh, what's the thing that keeps me from moving up accidentally to the third because you're louder than <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? That becomes down in my head and I start to drift here to What's what's a good answer for that? The good answer to that is it's really tough. It's really Self control. Hard. That's why we have uh, that's why we had Ted talking earlier about maintaining that melody line. Keeping that melody line is harder often than it is to find a harmony. Okay? Harmonies take a little bit of practice, it takes a little bit of time to find them. Okay, but actually being on that melody line and staying there steady as a rock while everybody else is working around you. And remember, three other people are working around you, all singing something different than what you want them to sing because it's not what's in your head. So be careful with that. Uh, I have one here. I'm sure yeah. it's first. No, no, he, he asked the question I was going to ask. Scott, Scott, Beach. Okay. Scott Beach. Did you meet him that way? <laughs> That's for our Sun City, West Arizona. I'm just wondering, I know there's a lot of color school around the country. Is there any color schools that teach how to maintain that harmony line when they're calling? A singing call? Do they put that as part of their repertoire? No, I mean, <laughs> Unfortunately, due to advertising restrictions. <laughs> I can't but say. We're not at liberty to say. However, after the microphone, you'd like to ask anybody in particular, say, Wade Driver. I'm betting he might have an option for you. <laughs> and so when I do a, 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 a caller school specifically on singing and voice and presentation techniques, specifically about that, um, he's got another one coming up soon that I, I'm not going to, but he'll, he'll cover all his material. The thing is, is even that program that we did, and we did an intense program this past August, uh, even that program, we're not going to spend a ton of time on harmonies, it's more about your individual performance and your singing individually. Uh, but yes, there are very few options for a, a college school that focuses on those things, which is exactly why he came up with it and invited me to be part of it, because there's so few people that do this. You want to do a quick demo? You just want to sing a little melody and I'll harmonize, or you harmonize one or the other? Oh, uh, what are we going to do? Just <laughs> <laughs> say so. Just hey, say well, you sing the melody, you are my sunshine. 
You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Oh, please don't take my sunshine away. All right, so that side do the melody, and this side will do the harmony, all right? You get the melody, all right? You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Sounded pretty cool. I really did. Thank you. Uh, might as well take the take these experts while they're here. Miss Luttrell, Melvin Luttrell, Fort Worth Flash, Dan Yankee, Melton. <laughs> if I was saying cold, I could understand that when you say Luttrell, it's a little harder. I was only make one comment, and this is not a self-serving comment, but I've been fortunate enough to work with some really good guys in doing our after party stuff and not so much in the calling but when we sing in the after parties and i always had trouble understanding how they could stay where they stay singing lead is pretty dang easy and a while ago i took i guess what was one of the harmony parts remember the second one that one of the harmony parts you know why it was easy for me there because i was listening to all the guys around me but if i were doing harmony with only three other guys and one of them was doing a different part that might be all over the place so I pick up theirs. Well, that my, is my problem. We'd be staying there. Now on lead, they follow me, which is pretty easy. But if I try to try to do harmony with other four of the guys doing the harm, same harmony part I'm in, like we were to go, that's easy. But you might be up there right now and try to do what I was doing by myself. I'd fall on my face. <laughs> only if you only have to until after the first kick. To, to the members of, of, of our barbershop group, uh, Melton is uh, one of the founding members of Carl Lab. There's four founding members still here today uh, at, at this convention. And what, what year did you find? 76? 73. 73. 1973 is one of the founding members. <laughs> Questions, comments, thoughts? Anything else? Amazing. You know, I've been listening and put up with him for the last two months and I'm planning this thing and okay. everybody give him applause and he took a deep breath what? and I see him in fall. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's all stand up and it's not, it's not, oh yeah, by the way, tomorrow night is the duets dance where people will be working in harmony all night long. All right, so one last try here. Sai's going to give us the uh, the note. Remember your thing? Remember? Go. Cool. Where's your guy?